Hi, I'm Jason Jordan. I'm the senior sound designer over at Sonovox. I spent a lot of time recording this piano and putting it together for our newest virtual instrument, 88. And when we decided we were going to make a piano, uh, we searched around uh, many parts in the Boston area and found this particular piano. And it has a lot of unique qualities that uh, you don't hear in most pianos. This is a Steinway D concert piano. This particular piano was hand-picked by Peter Serkin, international famous concert pianist, and it became his East Coast touring piano. We sat down and we started playing it. We realized uh, why he had picked it, because it, it has special you know, qualities to it that really make it an unbelievable piano. One of the things that I really like about this piano is uh, the dynamic contrast, the quality that you get in the dynamics because you can be really soft. I mean, you can probably be barely even hear that key right here. I hear it, you know, perfectly clear. But then, you know, so between, uh, but between all of these different dynamic levels that we sampled, uh, you, you have so much dynamic contrast in there. Um, and that's something that uh, I don't think you find in a lot of sample, uh, sampled libraries. Uh, a lot of stuff, you know, is either compressed or the volumes brought up. But, uh, um, you know, the, another part of what makes this particular piano special in that regard is, you know, your ability to play at very soft dynamic levels as well as, you know, really loud, almost like rock, uh, you know, dynamic levels. And then when you get to the low end, <laughs> The low end is, is is what's really incredible about this piano. I mean, it has this ring and bite to it that uh, you, you just don't find, especially in, uh, I haven't heard it in any sampled piano out there. Um, just this this growl, this, uh, uh, and, and it just, it hits you in the chest and fills your whole body. And so it's inspiring in that way. Well, this particular building is really cool because uh, it used to be a Masonic temple. And if you know anything about Masonic temples, there are always rooms built inside of rooms, which uh, you know makes for turning this particular space uh, into a recording studio pretty easy. Um, it was purchased by Fenwick Smith, who was a flutist for the Boston Symphony Orchestra. And uh, he did an acoustical treatment on the room uh, to basically turn it into a place to record classical chamber music. Uh, since then, uh, um, it's been taken over by John Weston of Future Productions, and uh, it's a full-time recording studio here. Uh, it's a gorgeous sounding hall and it was just a pleasure to be able to come in here and record this piano. Uh, but not only that, we did our complete symphonic collection in this hall as well. The recording process, uh, we, you know, we had a number of different mics set up. We had a pair of Omni and Cardioids inside the lid. We had a, a pair of Omni and Cardioids uh, uh, outside of the lid and then we have some room mics and and then you know we did a mix of all of those in order to get the sound that we wanted to have uh, the, really the main thing came in the actual sampling process and that was all 88 keys at uh, you know many many different velocities and and how we set up the velocity was in uh, you know 1 DB increments so you know I'd, you know, start at the lowest velocity, and um, you know we would monitor what that dB level was with all the mics, and then um, you know we would, you know, I would play to try to uh, you know get the next velocity up, just one dB increments all the way up. Uh, until we are at the very top. Some sample pianos, um, people loop the samples. In, order, in other words, the, the sample's so long, it goes forever, because these strings will just ring out for a very long time. And at some point, they'll just take part of that ring and, and they'll loop it, and then they'll put an envelope on it to kind of fade it out over time. Uh, we did no looping in any of our, our, our samples, so it's just, a, you know, it's just the string straight out forever. Uh, and some of these strings, you know, ring for, you know, up to 45 seconds, uh, you know, a minute. So uh, it was it was a long a long process to make sure that that we had every key. The other thing that we did was we recorded uh, the release samples of a key um, specific to a velocity and then specific to the speed that we're releasing them on. So you know, 
you have uh, the sound of the you know hammer coming down on the string uh, right at the point of you know right at the point of the release. So there's a short release, but then you know if I hold on to the key for a really extended amount of time and then release it, that release sample is different than you know the previous one. So there are multiple you know release samples uh, for for every single string at many different velocities. You know, and that was basically the process. Uh, I invite you to go to the website and, and experience 88 for yourself. There's all sorts of demos there, and and you know it's it's one of those purchases. It's like a a must-have in your studio.